Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Maxim Tudisny. I'm senior Android engineer here in SoftServe. And today we'll talk about uh, Segwarrant here on Android app. It's best practices for app security. So let's dive in. Uh, now we can see uh, our agenda for this meeting. So firstly, we will, of course, uh, uh, mention the importance of Android app security. Also, I will provide uh, afterwards uh, several threads, some common threads, and we will also mention OWASP 10 uh, about uh, all the risks for Android and uh, web application. Uh, also, of course, we will mention best practices. It will be best practices for app security, not only from my experience, but also from uh, Google main uh, documentation. And after, after that, we will uh, talk about uh, vulnerability scanners and we'll stop on uh, data serum, sneak SA, and yep. Uh, and after that, uh, we'll have a small uh, Q&A session. So if you will have any questions, you will be, uh, I will be glad to answer to them. Uh, let's continue. So importance of Android app security. Uh, of course, I think you know uh, about all the consequences that could make uh, our app uh, really bad if we neglect uh, Android app security. Uh, usually, one of them is security breaches uh, that could have a severe consequences for both app developers, users, and to, for overall uh, uh, brand app uh, image. Uh, usually, it could lead uh, to some severe legal application, um, some costly lawsuits, and of course, uh, damaging our company as well. So, uh, ensuring the security of Android apps is not a, a best practice. But also, it's necessary to maintain our user confidence and protect our business. So overall, if we demonstrate our commitment to web security, we establish ourselves as trusted developers and foster a loyal user base. Uh, and uh, another respect, it's also one uh, not, uh, uh, not the least, but also a really important one. It's, of course, uh, such regulations like uh, GDPR or CCPA, uh, usually, they impose a legal obligation on businesses uh, and in order to ensure that uh, all the security and privacy of uh, user data is considered and handled properly. Next, uh, you will see uh, several sections. There are four sections of different uh, threads to our Android apps. Uh, usually, they divide like that. Uh, you can see some uh, definition, but I think you're aware of most of them. But in short, malware is some like malicious software. Uh, it could be like uh, some Trojan viruses or ransomware that could attack your uh, mobile app and steal some data or something like that. Fission attacks, it's not that um, really think that we could react on, uh, on as a Android developers or mobile developers. But uh, we could um, create some like um, teaching for our uh, user base. So there will be, be a barrier of such things, or maybe integrate some uh, phishing bots or AI scanners to find this uh, kind of uh, attempts. Man in the middle attacks is usually uh, from the same, from the name, it's usually something that uh, is come from the one direction to another and um, Hacker is tried to intercept this manipulation and usually uh, unauthorized success or that modification will be there. Uh, and uh, we already mentioned data breaches. Data breaches is usually if we handle our data incorrectly, so there is some uh, unauthorized access to data. Usually it's for, like, for example, financial apps or so on, or sensitive information after, uh, for users as well. Uh, and now let's dive in for uh, best practice for Android app security. Um, you can see there are three sections, but there will be more. But first, uh, let's uh, talk about code review and secure development. Uh, any language that we use uh, for developing has um, its own secure code and guidelines. I added uh, links to Java and Kotlin secure guidelines in the presentation as we are speaking about Android development. And you should really follow them and make our code secure. Uh, another point is, of course, uh, regularly updating our third-party dependencies. 
because usually if there is some vulnerability or some bug was introduced in previous version, it should could be fixed in new one. And with it, it could, uh, this new tool, it's called Renovate. Uh, basically, it uh, creates a, a pull request for if you configure and integrate it well, it will create a pull request uh, to update the version of your Sapati libraries. And uh, it can be e quite easy to integrate you to a workflow. Another point is, of course, uh, secure communication protocols. And uh, if you're speaking about vulnerabilities, of course, there could be some vulnerabilities not from our code, not from third party dependency, but from Android OS itself. So, in this way, it's really important to integrate such stuff as provider installer. And this way, we could. Uh, uh actually listen and subscribe for uh, updating our secure provider on uh, user phone and we'll update it in it protect our for some attempts to actually exploit our app or phone of user as well it's really handy and next point is of course uh vulnerability scanners to our SICD, for example uh, we will cover this topic uh, more deeply in the next uh, slides, but for now I would recommend you to try, if you haven't tried yet, uh, of course SonarCube, because uh, many people think it's only for code coverage or some code smell, but uh, if you see for uh, SonarCube uh, analysis, so for example for pull request, there are also some secret, uh, section for security as well, and it could help you to find some um, vulnerabilities on the early stage as well. So it's really handy. Now, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, now let's talk about other topics. It's uh, user notification and authorization. Uh, it's in top OS 10. OS 10, it's, uh, it's the main, like the most common uh, risks and uh, errors to Android apps and uh, web applications as well. So usually it's really common to have some problems with your user notification on your app. So you really should be proactive about it and pay attention to it. For example, for your session management techniques and uh, some, for example, secure stored, uh, storage as well. And of course, uh, input validation, uh, such as uh, encoding techniques or synthesis user input is also really important. Next. Um, of course, if you're speaking about some secure in our Android apps and best practices, you need to think about in the network communication because um, network transactions are inherently risky for security because they involve transmitting data and usually it could be some sensitive data. So it's really important. I think it's not uh, new to you that uh, it's really recommend to use HTTPS uh, instead of HTTP because it could uh, actually encrypt your data uh, but uh, also there are some cases when you have a uh, socket communication, for example, for some, some simple creation of some chat or something like that. And if you use some socket communication, you can check uh, the cell socket class. It's really handy. It extends a regular socket class and it could help you. Also, there are a lot of ways to verify your certificate if you use one for an app and check if there are known like, certificates that will be installed for you from the user side as well. Also, if you speak about uh, secure network communication, we also should mention web use because uh, it's really one of the like, main unsecure, um, I would say, breached or Android app. So it should be really, uh, we should have a date input, uh, check any response of intent and so on and so forth. And of course, protect sensitive data during transmission as well. It could be for this, it could be HTS will be really handy. Next, uh, I'd like to show you uh, this example of a network security config. So, a network security config, it's like uh, this feature is lets you to customize your app security settings really easily. So, you shouldn't even uh, change uh, your app code. You just need to uh, add this. Uh, uh, XML file to your manifest under network security config and provide a uh, path to it. For example, it could be stored in an XML folder in a REST folder. So it is, as you can see on the slide, there are different uh, configurations for different domains. You can 
uh, for example, you can uh, permit uh, using uh, HTTPS or HTTP uh, for your domain. For example, in, in this case, you, you see that for domain images test info, we permit using uh, HTTP, HTTP uh, request. Uh, also, we can provide some uh, certificate pinning and really handy that we could, for example, add this debug over item uh, attack to, uh, for example, to download some certificates by user and it will be handled properly. Um, one other uh, best practice, of course, to drink water and uh, not only for you, but only for me. So it's like quick pause. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next, uh, about secure data storage. Um, if we already covered the topic for secure uh, network storage, let's uh, cover the topic about data storage. Uh, usually, if we speak about uh, data storage, it's uh, always about encryption. So if you use some mm, data stored locally on your device, if you're using, for example, the regular file, uh, consider checking the encrypted file from security library. It's quite easy to implement. It's really nice. Also, I think most of you are aware about using uh, preference in private mode, but if you have some cases and you store some really uh, sensitive data, maybe you want to use uh, encrypted shared preference and we will talk about them a little more there. Uh, also about uh, data minimization, it's a really vital principle to follow when storing user data um, because we can really achieve a lot of goals there. And of course, if you about uh, if you speak about uh, key management, we can see the point of a uh, key store system that was introduced by Google quite lately. So it is good. Also, when we speak about uh, external storage, we should use it cautiously. Uh, we should remember about stored directory access, a specific directory, and so on. And of course, it's nice to use uh, a right compiler uh, with ProgWard, so it helps to shrink, obfuscate, or optimize your code. And actually, there are a lot of benefits of using it. Your app will be smaller. Uh, it could prevent you from uh, such things like, like uh, reverse engineering of your app. And yeah, it's really nice. And your resources will be smaller as well. And here is an example of implementing encrypted shared preferences. So as you can see, it's quite easy. You just need to generate a master key from uh, this library and then uh, provide it to encrypted shared preferences and then use it as a regular editor as you see, use uh, just shared preferences. So in this case, if we add, for example, a kite, uh, variable to share preferences, it will be stored like this. So you, you can check the value and so forth. Uh, but if you use it in encrypted share preference, it will be encrypted uh, completely. And also another point, it will be changed the encryption and the values will be changed uh, every time when you edit this file, uh, edit this property. So it will be really hard to actually check uh, if you have some new variable, uh, new variable or something like that. But also it comes with some disadvantages. It's quite bad for performance if you compare regular share preferences and encrypted share preferences. So yeah, be sure you check and uh, keep in mind that it could be happen. And finally, let's move on to vulnerability scanners. Uh, so uh, vulnerability scanners play a crucial role in stressing our app security. They help us to identify potential weaknesses in, and vulnerabilities on our software. And today we'll explore the two popular uh, vulnerability scanners tools like uh, DataCRM and SneakySA. Uh, we'll talk uh, more detail in further, but uh, if you were, uh, DataCRM is like leading provider of advanced application security uh, solutions that provide us with scanners that could uh, easily be integrated in our apps. And uh, yeah, so just found uh, some vulnerabilities in our code and so on. And with, if you're speaking about Sneak, it helps to find uh, vulnerabilities in dependencies. So 
Here you can see a quite wide list of um, different uh, platform features of Data Serum, also how it could be integrated in your workflow. So uh, it really provides a lot of different features. Uh, one of them is automatic and static uh, analysis. So it performs uh, scan of your apps code, uh, behavior, identify vulnerabilities, and ensure robust security. Also, it's really nice uh, with this compliance and privacy insights because usually it could um, result in really uh, costly lawsuits and uh, data stream help you to found these issues and really easily mitigate them. Also, it uh, sent with uh, certify pinning in app protection. So it goes beyond scanning and uh, provide runtime application self-protection. That's really nice. And of course, uh, it could be easily integrated for your CI CD for continuous monitoring and alerting. And uh, also, it provides really nice uh, guidelines how to mitigate all the risks. So now you can see uh, in Data Serum in action, I run for my test app, uh, and it found some unsafe cryptographic encryption. As you can see, there are quite nice uh, description of this issue. Also, um, it tells you some place or absolute pass uh, of the code that was introduced this issue. Also, it will tell you um, any mitigation that could be provided for this and how to patch this issue. And it could be integrated with Jira, as you can see on the right side of the slide. So it could be configured quite easily. You could add uh, some due date for this issue, uh, some uh, send news to it and also all the information that you need will be provided there in this uh, ticket as well. Next, uh, we will talk about SNIC SA, uh, but we need to mention that uh, SA it's a software composition analysis. So basically, it's a tool or application security methodology, I would say, even. Uh, for managing uh, open source components like our third party dependencies, uh, libraries, and so on and so forth. Um, it has a lot of benefits. Uh, it supports a lot of languages. Uh, we speak in uh, the right and develop, uh, development. It supports Java and Kotlin very well. Also, it's uh, open source. It depends. Uh, also, it could be easily integrated with uh, our CI, with pull requests. So. Uh, you can see in the live environment uh, setup if you would like to. And yeah. Uh, now let's see, it's in action. So uh, usually, if you're speaking about Android apps, they, especially for about the big apps, uh, usually they multimodal. So if, uh, Sneak will integrate you uh, and provide you different projects for every model that you have. For example, if you can see from the list, uh, from the left side of the, the slide, there are different projects in my app, and there are different types of uh, wounds that were found. For example, some high critical, have some medium, and some low as well. And the right side, there is a more detailed view from this project if we filter it by project as well. So here you can see it's also nice integration. Uh, with uh, Jira, so there are like detailed views, so you can see uh, security information, detailed information, some uh, mm, mitigation uh, suggestions. Also, it will provide you uh, the link, for example, for some uh, libraries if you need so exploit as well available if it's available from Sneak database because Sneak is actually quite a big company and they not only work in this uh, scanner but also they have uh, other solutions as well and they own a library of uh, vulnerabilities. So yeah, and also it shows you uh, in which uh, version of, uh, for example, dependency in this case of detect core uh, where it was fixed. So it was introduced in one version and then fixed in another. And also, this information could be provided and added to your Jira ticket, for some, for example, due date, some uh, workflows that you can configure easily, and some mitigations and links and all the resources that you need. So it's really handy. And actually, conclusion, conclusion, and to sum up, 
the security of Android apps is extremely important uh, in today's, uh, especially in today's uh, digital landscape. And uh, we should prioritize app security by implementing best practices. Uh, we can ensure the protection of user data, maintain user trust, and overall uh, brand image as well. Additionally, we could integrate uh, these best practices and leveraging vulnerabilities like scanners, uh, for example, data CRM or Snake SCA, and it could be powerful uh, in order to ensure integrity and confidentiality of uh, our apps. And remember uh, that Android security is like an ongoing process. So usually we should always react proactively, uh, stay vigilant against emergency, and always react really fast because they could really influence and consequences could be hard for our app. And once again, don't forget to drink water because it's really beneficial for your health and maybe not that beneficial for your app, but it will be better for your health for sure. And um, thank you for attention. There are several references in uh, presentations that I will show you. I've used them for during my preparation. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for for this. Uh, it was really awesome. Uh, so I, I've got a question. Uh, are you using those tools on your real life projects? And may I ask you, for example, uh, to give me some examples from your own experience, uh, if possible, for sure. Uh, for example, for some uh, data breaches found by those tools in your real life project. If so. uh, yeah, sure. Uh, actually, these two tools I'm using on my uh, projects, it's really handy. And I would like, that's why I wanted to actually share this knowledge with you. So um, about the Ethereum, it actually helped us found some problems with uh, privacy policy. So it um, in the future, it could lead to our costly uh, lawsuits because uh, privacy policy should be uh, updated uh, always and there are some strict policies especially in the European Union so it really help um, about uh, so yeah there, there were several uh, uh, issues I couldn't tell more because it's actually protected by NDA and that are, so but uh, actually all this uh, scanners I am using currently in normal project and yeah I really recommend them yes guys maybe someone uh, else has question <laughs>